السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله. Good afternoon for you. Hoping إن شاء الله you are in the best of health and إيمان. You can start by أم الكتاب. بسم الله الرحمن Uh, how many presentation did you prepare? Uh, two cases, doctor. Sorry? Two cases. Two cases. Okay. Who will be the first one to present? Uh, my daughter, Aida. Aida? Okay. So, say Bismillah, Nur Aida, Ajila. Okay. Let us listen from you. Uh, there is a role play, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Rauda will be my uh, partner. She will be uh, the patient. I think we can start now. Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, Puan. Uh, I'm Aida, a third year medical student. So are you the guardian uh, of this little child, eh, little girl? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I'm the guardian of uh, this little girl named Amir. Okay. She is five years old. Okay. Uh, can, can I ask some questions uh, regarding your child uh, for the sake of learning? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, may I know what cause you bring your child uh, to the hospital? Uh, she had a fitting episode um, mm -hmm. today. The late, uh, she had four episodes and the latest is uh, just now. Oh. Uh, can you describe more on how uh, the seizure occurred? Like uh, what your child doing before the first uh, she, uh, seizure occurs? Uh, okay, so the first episode occurred at uh, 2 p.m. when she was eating lunch and um, then suddenly, uh, she had like jerky movement that involved mm -hmm. uh, both of her hands. Okay. Uh, is there any rolling up her eyes or drooling of saliva? Uh, yes, she, there was a uh, uproll of the eyeball, but there was no drooling of saliva. Uh, how about uh, clench of her teeth? The um, there was no clenching of teeth. Okay. So, uh, do your child respond to your call during the season or her uh, consciousness impaired? Uh, no, she didn't respond when I called her. Uh, uh, so, how long the, the season last? And uh, was the season? Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Last about? Um, the season lasts about one minute and it mm -hmm. uh, resolves like that spontaneously. Okay. So, uh, do you notice your child confused or tired after the seizure? Uh, yes. Uh, I do notice that she looked a bit tired and then mm -hmm. she... Uh... She looked a bit tired, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, do your child uh, lost uh, continuous during the event? Uh, no. No. Uh, beside loss of consciousness, uh, do your child behavior change? Uh, no, I didn't notice any behavior change. Okay. Uh, do you have history of uh, epilepsy or febrile seizure in your family? Uh, no. Uh, do your child experience uh, other symptoms such as headache, neck stiffness, or uh, sensitive to light? Uh, no, there was no any, uh, that, there was no any other symptoms during the uh, season. So, uh, is this the first time she having a seizure? Uh, no, actually, uh, she had, um, this is the second time she experienced uh, like this. Mm -hmm. And then the previous one, uh, during, she was two years old and she was hospitalized uh, about two days. Oh. 
So, uh, and yeah. Dr. Said, uh, she had a febrile fit. A febrile fit. So, do you have a medical follow-up after that? Um, when, uh, during, uh, at the hospital, doctor gave her some sort of syrup medication called mm -hmm. syrup epilim, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but she only took uh, it about two months and there, is, uh, there was no any follow-up because um, transportation issue to the hospital. Okay. Uh, was your child well before this uh, siege occur or is there any fever or illness before? Uh, yes, yeah, she do have a uh, fever two days ago. Mm -hmm. um, the fever start early in the morning. Oh. So, do you measure the temperature? Uh, no, I didn't measure it. Uh, so, you just can feel the warm? Uh, yes, uh, my uh. head feel warm when I... Alright. So, uh... What does the uh, fever fit, uh, pattern, does it happen continuous throughout the day or on and off? Uh, the fever was on and off throughout the day. Alright. So, uh, does a child having a shiver, shivering or during the fever? Like chills? No, I did not get any shivering during okay. the fever. Okay. Uh, have you done anything to your uh, child to relieve the fever? Uh, yes, I decided to buy a uh, syrup medication for the fever at uh, the nearest pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So the re uh, the fever resolved on. Um, um, mm -hmm. it resolved sure. on a short term, and then the next day it uh continued. Uh, uh, does your child active during the fever? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, she looked less energetic because uh, uh, she lost it completely with me. Okay. So, uh, is there any symptom occurs besides the fever such as cough or runny nose? Uh, there was cough but there was no runny nose noted. Mm. So, uh, so, when did cough start? Uh, it started about the same time with the fever, two days oh. ago or so. Alright. So it occurs all day or intermittent? Uh, no, um, on and off also. also. So uh, can you describe more about the cough? Does it uh, have product, uh, I mean sputum come out? Uh, I think there is sputum because I noticed uh, she kind of like swallow something, uh, but she, uh, she didn't expect it. So I think there is sputum. Okay. So how about the cough sound? Does it sound like barking or something weird? Uh, no, it sounds like normal cough. Normal. Okay. So, uh, is there any symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea or uh, rashes on her body? Uh, no. Uh, so, how about other family members? Uh, do they have the same symptom with her? Some same like her? Uh, no, also. Uh, so, uh. How about your child appetite? Uh, reduced or normal, right before? Uh, she refused any solid food, but when I give mm -hmm. her milk, she drink the milk. Okay. So have you traveled before or having a water activity? Uh, no. No. So uh, do no. you notice any? No. All right. Uh, so do you notice any discharge from your uh, child ears? Uh, no. No. Uh, so do you notice uh, your child having shortness of breath or abnormal sound while breathing or changing in her voice? No. No. Mm. Yeah. Does your child complain any chest pain or palpitation or swelling? Uh, uh, no, so. No, so. It's okay. Uh, do you not uh, for the cough? Uh, do you notice any blood stain on her cough? No. No. So, uh, do you notice any abdominal distension? Uh, no. Also. No. Also. Uh, have your child have problem with mm, defecate? To defecate. No, she. No. Normally. 
Okay. Does she make uh, mention anything about her stool, uh, such as color? Uh, no, she didn't mention any about her okay. uh, Do you notice any changes in her urine, such as bubbling or the color of the urine itself, whether it's dark or the straw color? Um, I think no. 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 Okay. Uh, how about the frequency? Is it staying as before? Uh, yeah, normal. The same normal. As. Okay. Uh, do you notice any bleeding in your uh, child body? Like in the gum? Uh, uh, no. No. How about bruises on her skin? Eh? No. No. Okay. Uh, does she complain any muscle age or joint pain? Uh, no, but uh, I noticed she she need to hold on to something when walking after the CJ episode. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, is this the first admission to the hospital? Hospital? Uh, no. Uh, um, she actually uh, she was admit multiple times. Mm -hmm. Um, so the uh, the first one uh, when she was about one year old, one years old. She was having a disease called central hypotonia, if I'm not mistaken. And mm -hmm. as far as I remember, the doctor said it was related to the abnormalities in the in her brain that caused mm -hmm. her developmental to be delayed. And then um, the doctor there referred her to the speech therapy, physiotherapy, and also occupational therapy. Um, she also had done MRI during the uh, during that time, um, but the doctor said there was no any evidence of brain abnormalities. So um, because of this disease, she had three hospitalization. And um, uh, as I mentioned before, um, she was uh, uh, during she, uh, she was three years old, she had been hospitalized because of her mm -hmm. And the most recent hospitalization was on January because uh, she had some of um, tonsil problem. And it was resolved with uh, antibiotics. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's no surgical procedure done before? Uh, no, there was no yeah. any surgical uh, procedure. So is this your first child? Uh, this is my first and the only child I have. Okay. <laughs> so I want to ask, uh, during your pregnancy, is there any problem occur to both of you, such as mm, you have GDM or GBS infection? Um, no, but uh, I had placenta previa type 3 during this pregnancy. Okay. So how you deliver your baby? Is it normal or through uh, surgery C-section? Uh, through C-section. Okay. Uh, because of the placenta, right? Yes. Okay. So at what week at that time? Your pregnancy? Uh, it was at term. Um, I think 38. So, what is your what is her birth weight? Um, about two point two kilo. Okay. So, uh, is there any complication? Uh, after the delivery. Uh, no, there was no non complication during the delivery and also after the delivery. Okay. So, how about her diet? Uh, do you breastfeed your child, and until when? Uh, I breastfeed her up until six months. Yes, six months. Uh, may I know when she start to taking food or weaning? Um, after uh, at six months, six from months. six months old. Oh. So, what kind of food you uh, you give to her? Um, after uh she's weaning, first I give uh porridge, and currently. She consume normal or adult food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, uh, special food that you give? Uh, yes, I do give her pedia sugar milk uh, mm -hmm. to help her gain weight. Okay. So, uh, is her development uh, normal just like um, the other uh, peers? Uh, no, because of the central hypotonia problem, yes. she had a uh, problem with her development, lah, delay. Mm -hmm. um, her weight is not correspond, correspond to her age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you try take any medication before the seizure occurs? Uh, 
uh, no, currently there was no uh, medication given to her. Okay. Uh, so do you give any supplement or traditional juice? Uh, no, also. Uh, how about allergy? Uh, does she have an allergy to medication or food? Uh, no. So uh, how about her immunization status? Uh, she okay. completed all her immunization up to her age. Okay. Uh, do you take any additional vaccination such as rotavirus or varicella? Uh, no. So uh, do your child uh, has side effect after the injection? No. So uh, may I know your age and also your husband's age? Uh, my age is 32 years old and my husband is 31 years old. Oh, so uh, both of you have any chronic uh, disease such as hypertension or diabetes, asthma? No. No. So is there uh, any history of malignancy in your family? Uh, no, but um, her aunt has um, congenit congenital heart disease that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, septal defect. Do, um, mm -hmm. And currently her aunt is about 29 years old. So, uh, are you cousin cousin Vietnamese? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, may I know, uh, what, uh, do you do for living? Uh, I am housewife, and mm -hmm. my husband is a, a track worker. Okay. Uh, how about your family monthly income? About uh, one thousand ringgit per month only. So, uh. Do your house has good water and electrical supply? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry to ask in this question, but uh, it is important to know because uh, this could affect your child health. So are you, uh, are both of you a smoker? Um, I am not smoking, but uh, my husband is an active smoker, uh, and mm -hmm. he smoke in the house now. Mm -hmm. So you live, uh. Only three people in the house? Uh, no, uh, we live together with um, other seven family members. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, I think that's all. Um, that's all for me. Thank you. And uh, for me and uh, for us. Okay. So I will proceed with physical examination. No. Okay. Don't proceed to physical examination. Just can you summarize for me, please? Uh, for the, okay. Just um, a simple summary of the summary. history. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Nur Amira, uh, five years, four months old girl. Don't read. Yeah. Don't read. Don't read. I need uh, the oh, yeah. know from book, uh, from brain, not from book. Okay. Uh, so, uh, my patient, Amira, five years, four months old, Malaysia, uh, with underlying central hypotonia and also history of uh, febrile feet at three years old, uh, presented to Hossas uh, due to a multiple episode of uh, seizure that was uh, preceded by uh, uh, upper respiratory tract infection that uh, comes which is fever and cough. So what is this type of, uh, of fits now, is it? Yep. Febrile seizure? Um, I think no, because uh, febrile seizure need high fever, but this, uh, my patient mm, doesn't, uh, what you call? Uh, the fever was in low grade. So what's your diagnosis? Oh, uh, my diagnosis uh, will be meningitis okay. for now. Other differential diagnosis? Other differential diagnosis could be um, complex pro complex provisions. <laughs> yeah, very important. So what is the meaning of complex febrile? Uh, uh, the, the seizure occurs uh, more than 15, and there is more in what? Uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> and then uh, the seizure occurs more than one 
in 24 hours and it occurs uh, uh, all the body, I mean, throughout all. Excellent, to generalize the not localized. Ah, yes, generalize, yeah. Okay. What is the fourth one? The fourth one, it could be um, uh, me, uh, electrolyte make, uh, imbalance. No, 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 the criteria to say, is it complex? Oh, uh, a th paralysis and also. Uh, okay. So we, we put it globally as most neurological deficit. Oh, neurological deficit, yeah. It was paralysis. Some patient mm. can be like transient hemiplegia, and even in, sometimes even with migraine. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the age for uh, febrile seizure, uh, seizure to be considered? Uh, less than five years old. So tell me the start and the end point. Uh, for the start, uh, two, uh, I can't remember the start, but <laughs> maybe three months. Rauda? Yeah, what is the age to consider the price? Um, Febrile, um, about six months to six years. Okay. Any ad from uh, our pediatric protocol, last edition? Then um, yet? This is uh, from um, UNC. From what? Um, University Malaya PIT. Uh, okay. Can you check your pediatric protocol? It's the um, first edition. And it's it's very important to consider it uh, according to our regulation in Malaysia because there is some uh, what to say to you. If you have protocol in your country, it is a very, very good thing. You must uh, go through it. You must feel happy that you have these protocols. And if there is soft changes, we, it can be done by the high level, I mean, consultant and uh, the subspecialist. Okay, for uh, this one, PITS protocol for addition. Um, for fibro seizure, uh, it is associated with children between three months and six years. And we started by three and the end by six, okay? okay. Three months until six years. Many countries drive the difference, six months to five years. So don't be distracted. Just say, documented in pediatric protocol that it is from three months to six months. And it is really, it looks very wise because febrile seizure, as you know, uh, it is a, a genetic disease. There is some gene for the febrile seizure, okay? Which mm -hmm can occur in some community uh, more than others. And it looks here uh, very common, okay? So take care about that. So very good, uh, Adila informed us about the difference between simple and the complex febrile seizure. And she said, because the patient has a typical, I must consider CNS infection, either meningitis or encephalitis. So Daniel, can you tell us another differential diagnosis? Uh, it would be encephalitis. Okay, we said meningoencephalitis. Uh, this time we will be able to say what is the difference between meningitis and encephalitis and meningoencephalitis. Okay, what other? Mm, uh, intracranial uh, abscess. So good, this as a complication. Other? No, don't go through. I need to ask you, we'll study all these slides together. Don't give him knowledge because we must have. Uh, mm. Other than that, I, I think it is an intracranial hemorrhage. Good. 
So again, as I used to, to tell your colleagues, go for the pathology of diseases. You just finish in your two, how is the pathophysiology of any disease? It can be infection. Yes? So you speak about meningitis, encephalitis, meningitis, encephalitis, brain abscess. Second thing, it can be malignant. So it can be brain tumor or not. It is intracerebral pressure or not. It can be also trauma. You must ask if there is any history of fall down. Okay, because child abuse, if you didn't uh, put it in your differential diagnosis, you may miss some babies who can expire this one if no one take care about that, okay? So you must go through the, is it inflammation, uh, like uh, immune diseases like SLE can cause convulsion, is it infection? It is uh, vascular, like if there is bleeding, okay, or thrombosis. It can be CNS abnormalities, like this patient, we don't know what is behind this, the original problem. It can be tumor, it can be trauma, it can be metabolic. And your colleague before, they did a very good job for the just abbreviation of the, uh, they put like one mnemonic for the pathophysiology of disease. If you remember it, it was, I, I cannot remember what is the mnemonic for that. Uh, anyone can open and know it because it is very helpful for you. Okay. Sometimes metabolic. So Akila, what metabolic disease can cause conversion? Our metabolic uh, changes which can cause conversion. Uh, hypoglycemia. Very good. Very, very, very good. So we must take care about hypoglycemia, number one in pediatrics. So remember beside it, thank you for that. I must put beside that, if any patient came with convulsion, especially in pediatrics, I will do RBS, blood sugar level. BSL, as you are uh, making the abbreviation here, BSL, RBS, whatever. Okay, so we are going to measure the blood sugar, which are very important. Because if the blood sugar is low, the treatment usually would be simple just to give IV dextrose. Any other, Akila? Uh, uh, uremia? uremia, doctor? Very good. So the patient of chronic renal failure, the patient even of kidney, acute kidney injury, not chronic, can be resisted by compulsion. Okay? Let's remember uh, that many cases of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and the like that can come with convulsion because of hypertension. What other metabolic? And remember, sorry, that any organ, any organ failure can cause convulsion, like acute hepatic encephalitis. The liver is deteriorated very rapidly; it can cause affect the brain, also the kidney, like that. What other metabolic? Hi. Yes. Um, hypo hypoxemia. Hypo. Hypoxemia. Okay. Uh, this is a very important. Usually, we are requesting here in Malaysia. We call it BUS. B U S E. BUS. Okay. So blood urea serum electrolyte. Serum electrolyte are very dangerous. If disturbed. It can cause a lot of problem. One of it is coma, one of it is convulsion like that. So hyponatremia means it decrease sodium in the blood, especially if it came less than 120, can give convulsion. Of course, also higher. Uh, hyper, uh, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia. So many electrolytes if disturbed, but the most famous one is the sodium and the dextrose can affect the one. So it may be metabolic. Also, it can be inborn errors of metabolism. 
which can affect you sometimes. So be care about when you are presenting innovation to try to remember the pathophysiology of diseases because you will think in your differential diagnosis what it can be. Okay, one by one, this patient has hepatitis splenomegaly. What can be? It can be infection. Yes, infectious hepatitis. Can be malignant. Yes, it is like that. It can be genetic disease like thalassemia. Can be. It can be a hematological problem. It can. Be. So if I put in my background this way of thinking, I will broad my differential diagnosis, and I need this one to be second nature of you. Don't accept single different single diagnosis. Even you are sure by 99%. You must ask yourself, if it is not like that, what can be? <clears throat> okay? Uh, and, but, that, but that way, like today, we are speaking about convulsion. So at the end, Adela will be understand what is the fibrile seizure, what is the symbol, what is the complex, what is the epilepsy, what is the brain tumor, what is the meningitis? What is the brain abscess? What is the uh, hypoglycemia or hyponatremia? Or so, what about child abuse? What about incidental injury? So all this at the end, she will come and she has a good background about not one disease. It is about ten diseases. That's why, and hopefully, alhamdulillah. Uh, our Kulia is offering for you out of campus. You can just go for the library and you can just go through any update like up to date and just open, just write convulsion in children or in pediatrics. We'll tell you rapidly, even the general line which will help you how to think. Okay, that is the issue which I am trying to tell you. You have about 1,000 days. If you make it uh, a good chance for yourself every day, you are stand, start, uh, studying the mini case and you are trying to go through its differential diagnosis and more details and like that and to try even to put it in, in one uh, software for yourself, it will be very good this time. We will have background, but if you are lazy, if your mind is not engaged with medicine by engaged by anything which can waste the time, you will not be able to be a competent doctor. We will start from zero point. We'll see you in year five with the same standard today. You are not building anything anymore. It is not good. Okay. Am I clear? Okay, so you can continue now, uh, Adila. So um, the thing is which we presented already, you can just summarize it rapidly and tell us your. Uh, so uh, I don't need to read the whole. Okay, you, so this is the symptom, all can see it. Mm -hmm. This is the. Uh, Signs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just summarize the signs, right? Okay. okay. So uh, so on my examination, there was a uh, enlarged tonsil noted, uh, and on the uh, neuro neurolo neurological uh, system examination, there was hypertonia and also hyperreflexia on her both uh, of lower limbs, and her and there is also positive Berzinski sign and also credit sign, which may indicate uh, meningitis. Okay, sorry. Yeah. That, uh, who, who, who other stuff are present with us? So now we can see you. Adila commenting about Fawaz. Is it enough to see hypertonia, hyperreflexia? Or you need to some more detail. Yes, what? Is it enough to say the patient has hypertonia and hyperreflexia? 
Oh, I think we should also see the grid of the hypotonia and hyperflexion. Good. So number one, we need to know the grid. What else? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, they um, since I take from the senior, so they don't mention about the grid. Yes, but uh, at, at least you you can ask for simple points. I mean, child are manipulating. He is moving at least there are three and above because he can now walk against the ground. Okay, uh, and at least you must be able to to get an idea about the the muscle power. How is the how many degree of muscle power do you know effect? Sorry, that. <clears throat> Sorry, that. But at the end, I'm asking the muscle power. Uh, uh, you mean the grading, is it? Yes. Uh, there is uh, five. Okay. Uh, it's great from uh, zero to five. It depends on the uh, muscle power. Uh, and also, uh, based on the active moment and also the gravity. Uh, resistance. Okay, can you just tell me what is the, the difference between the stage three and four? I'm sorry, Dr. Here is the grade four. What is the difference? Uh, for grade four. Uh, the why I'm not quite sure. Okay. So you must be able for any you to know the point, the most important point, like three or four, three. Now I am dealing with anti-gravity, they are great four with minimal, you can only tolerate minimal resistance, like that. It is the same. Like if you if I ask uh, if I was opening it twice, why if I was you are opening it twice? You are making uh, counting you without. <laughs> Did you open to? Okay, so is that if you ask you also about cardiac murmur? How many grades? Mm -hmm. Zati, can you hear me? Is it six grades? Okay. I am asking the Noor is Zati. Yes, it is correct, six. But I would like to ask is that yeah, how is this six grades? Amira? She is not around? Okay, Sharifa. Yes, so your colleague said the cardiac murmur can be divided into six stage. Did you agree? Uh, yes. So how is it? How can we make it? Um, so it is uh, grade one to six. So the six is the loudest. So grade one, uh, it's usually uh, overlooked, but it is uh, need to be here caref very carefully during uh, auscultation mm, and number two uh, grade two is uh, soft uh, heard in all position uh, no thrills uh, grade three no thrills also but it is uh, moderately loud um, grade four it is loud but uh, 
it is associated with a palpable thrill. A great five, a very loud with thrill, and it is heard with a stethoscope partly off uh, the chest. Okay. Okay, that, and then that's good. So we know now <clears throat> the landmark is number four. Okay, it means if I put my hand and I can palpate the mirror, it means I am either grade four or five or six. If no, it will be grade one or two or three. Because many of you said, yes, I can hear Myanmar grade two and about bit thrill. How come it's two or four bit different, okay? So you must know. So how is the thrill looks like, Sharifa? Three. Yeah. Uh, so three, no trills, uh, and it's, the sound is loud. No, no, no. I have said when, when you are putting your hand to the to the chest, how can you palpate the three looks like what? Oh, it is like uh, uh, guitar and like I mean it's like resonance or um, how could you say? Mm, anyone? Sorry? Vibration, vibration. Oh, vibration. Yes, just remember if you put your hand over the, the cat, you find it moving and making some movement under your hand. It looks like that, okay? It is very important not to miss it in your life and in your exam, inshallah. Okay, that is to say we must be able to comment not about high uh, tone reflex, but we must say power, even if you didn't do it, I, I would like to examine the patient for each group, from lower to upper, and check how, how is that. And then I must uh, comment about three, three things. Is there any ABC? After tone power reflex, I must comment about the ABC. A, B, A means is there in ataxia or not? B is the Babinski, which we already informed. And the C is the clonus. Clonus also very important. The broad, uh, Babinski and the clonus are very, very important. Okay? So don't forget to make your examination of the nervous system complete. Of course, here next the Brodzinski, you must say if there any neck stiffness beside it or not, because the issue will start by neck stiffness, which can be propagated to be more severe. Okay. So until now, it is clear diagnosis is could be meningitis. Meningitis, because we have positive kernic and the Brodzinski. I yeah. hope we make demonstration how to do it here. Uh, let us continue. Yes. Continue your presentation, please. Um, so, uh, I will go to uh, investigation. So, uh, for investigation, I would like to send a full blood count uh, to detect any evidence of infections uh, and to assess patient and whether she, uh, she is anemic or not. Uh, should we start the investigation or differential diagnosis? So what other differential diagnosis at this point you need to consider? So can we consider uh, uh, just like uh, what uh, Daniel said, it could be encephalitis. And also, uh, because uh, the fever and also uh, multiple episodes of uh, the seizure. And uh, the patient also come with uh, an impaired uh, of consciousness. Yes, 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 I agree, but I'm asking you, what is, uh, how can you diagnose now? What investigation? Oh, investigation, so, uh, so we send full blood cow. Yes. Uh, yeah. And to check for infection, and also want to assess whether my patient is enemy or not. So the result, 
result shows a uh, high level of uh, white cell count, which is leukocytosis, and also a high level of neutrophil, uh, which and this may indicate a uh, bacterial infection. And her platelet also increased, um, maybe due to reactive thrombocytosis, uh, maybe and also because of infection. So I would like also to send a renal profile to detect any electrolyte imbalance and also any evidence of acute kidney injury and that may cause by the infection. And, and the result for my patient, all normals except for creatinine, uh, which is low. So this could be because of uh, malnutrition. And since uh, my patient has poor or intake, uh, and I also like to send uh, C reactive 40 uh, to detect any ongoing inflammation. And the patient had high level of CRP. And this can indicate uh, inflammation ongoing in his uh, body. Uh, I would like also to do blood, uh, render blood glucose. But um, uh, my patient uh, did not do this uh, to check for hypoglycemic. hypoglycemic. And then uh, I would like to do a uh, lumbar puncture to get CSF uh, analysis. But before that, uh, maybe I would, like, uh, I would like to send CT scan or MRI for the brain uh, to check whether um, is there any sign of increased uh, intracranial pressure and so on. Also to exclude any other mass lesions such as uh, malignancy, or is there any hemorrhage occurs uh, inside her brain? Uh, and then I would like to also send a blood culture uh, to find the causative agent and also a urinalysis, which is uh, I would like to do urine culture to detect any presence of uh, organism in the case of UTI, unitrack and infection. Mm, since uh, my patient tonsils was enlarged, so I I I, would, I want to do trap swap to check for is there any pressure that could lead to the uh, meningitis uh, infection. Okay. Okay. I think, I think that's all uh, for the investigation. Continue your presentation, okay. Mm -hmm. So, next. Uh, next. next. Yes. Oh, next will be OC. Okay. Oh, different. So, my premier present this, which is uh, Izati Amira. Okay, Izati. Where are you? <laughs> So I will proceed with the OSCE question. Okay, uh, so uh, there is a result of a CF, CSF analysis uh, with which the color is turby and the glucose is low and the protein is high. So the first question is, uh, what is the diagnosis? So uh, anyone knows? Or I will proceed with the answer. Uh, uh, I would say uh, it is bacterial meningitis. Okay, that's correct. Okay, so for the second question, uh, name two gram-negative diplococci organism that can give this uh, CSF result, which glucose is low and protein is high. I want to try. Uh, so the two gram negative organism can be Neisseria meningitis and Haemophilus influenza type B. Okay, so we proceed with the third question. Uh, what is the possible complication of the diagnosis, which is bacterial meningitis? Uh, I would like to try. Uh, the patient might have uh, hearing loss, uh, vision loss, hydrocephalus. 
So, uh, so that's all for the OSCE because I just can only find one question uh, regarding this case, which is meningitis. So I think we can proceed to the second case. Where is the photo of Kermix and Dr. Zaneski, please? Let your colleagues see it. Just open Google. I'm sorry, that's the photo of what? Kermix and Dr. Zaneski signs. Oh, okay, okay. It's very important. They have any picture of uh, opositonus. Let us finish first the yes. Why you cannot find any more uh, Oski Sharifa? Uh, is it Sharifa or is that? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because Why? most of the occupation on meningitis is more to the CSF analysis. No. So it's about the same. This is a very important. Now we are uh, away from the hospital. So we must try to demonstrate for every case as picture as we can. You see now how we are doing this one. The first one, we are trying for Brodzinski <coughs> to flex the neck. Automatically, the leg will be flexible. So this is positive Brodzinski. How also to see if there any neck stiffness or not. It is very important sometimes to keep the, to remove the pillow from the patient and just support the head and just try to Elevate it slightly, we find uh, a resistant. And if you are going to increase, so also there is uh, flexion of the knees. So we can check if there any neck stiffness, if there any Brodzinski, come for the the other sign, which is the Kernix. You see Kernix now how are doing it one one by one. So we'll start this one and try to make extension, he cannot. Hello. Oh, okay. 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 Sorry, the, there is some problem in the internet. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Yes, so now I need you to present for us what is the opositonus. No, sorry, Dr. What? Opositonus. This is our shit back. O B G H. Or in US. I'm sorry, Doctor. Can you spell it again? O P I T H O N U S.
Did you see if you find this, this Arshid one? If you find any child with Arshid back like this, it means the brain are very, very irritable, okay? And it is very dangerous science, especially in small children. It can occur if the patient has severe jaundice, which can cause uh, uh, encephalitis of the brain, which is presented by this sign. It is very important, okay? This is an important issue. If you are speaking about a case of meningitis, you must take care about it. Okay, is it clear? One right again, what is the berberic crash? Just like Berbera. I'm sorry, Dr. Berberic crash. Or Berbera. What is the meaning of perperic crash? What is the difference between simple rash and the perperic crash? Anyone knows? Mm, what is the difference of berberic and non-berberic rash? Uh, the berberic will not blanch when we press on it. Yes, thank you. Very, very important observation. Mustn't miss at all. Okay, so if you found for anyone the rash is non-blanching, okay? What is the meaning of non blanching When I am pressing over it, it will not disappear. Okay? At that point, we must take care it is a perpetual crash. If I find any patient, please remember this. If you find any patient about convulsion, okay? At the same time, he has this perpetual crash, you must consider meningitis because of meningoencephalitis usually and some other bacteria will cause this berberic crash and it means the patient is in critical situation. If you are not able to diagnose and start the treatment on the spot, because you, will, you must know that diagnosing even of suspicious, suspicious of meningitis, if you are working in KK in far area from the hospital and you found the Kernig, the Brodzonisky, and the other signs of meningitis are there. Okay, okay. Continue. Hello? Just a while, I will switch off the other. So if you found any patient with fever and got even few berberic crash, you must take care. It can be meningococcal meningitis, okay? And it is very important and it means the patient. And I also, even if you are a bit far from the hospital and you suspect meningitis, you will find in the pediatric protocol that you need to give the patient intra uh, the first those of antibiotic, okay, either venicibin or ciftriaxone, okay, before referring him to the hospital, because if we start the treatment early, we will decrease the complication, okay? That's why the diagnosis of meningitis or any uh, cautious diagnosis, we must take care. You see, this is very important slide, thank you. The ideal is to put a microscopic uh, glass over it. Just you put the microscopic glass and you will see it over it. Usually also you can put your finger and remove it. Is, it is there, not feeding rapidly, but this is the typical one. If it came to you during the exam, you, you, you mustn't miss it, please, okay? 
So this is a very important point. If you write now again, please, the neurocutaneous syndromes, and I need you to know about that. It's very important. That's why if you start like making mind map for every symptom, for every patient, you will be able to make a good software inside your brain how to think, how to pick the different cases. So now neurocutaneous syndrome, can you write? And ask Mr. Google for neurocutaneous syndrome. And what is the issue of neurocutaneous until he opened it? Neurocutaneous, do you know that the nervous system and the skin, both of them came from ectoderm. Okay? That's why there is about 10 or more cases combined the problem with the skin and the brain. If you find anything in the brain like convulsion, like abnormal movement, like, 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 you must ask yourself, is there any clue in the skin or not? Okay? Of course, the most famous one is the Mm -hmm. What is the most famous neurocutaneous syndrome? Neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis. Usually we will not see this neurofibromatosis very early, but if you came for another photos, you will find a child with cafe or lace spots, which has certain uh, distribution, size, and the color, and the like that, cafe or lace. And if you open, you will find a lot of manifestation in the skin. Can you come down and uh, close this uh, phacomatosis? Yeah, close this phacomatosis. Close this box, please, the black box, and let us see the photos only. Close the old box. Close it now, please. This box, the black one. Okay, come down, please. More down. Yes, yes, down. You see this one, the one in the middle here, you can see what is there. This is the cafe only spots. The one, yes. And what is there? There is some it changing in the axilla, known ash leaf, uh, known as uh, no, not ash leaf. Uh, the ash leaf is in the in the back. Okay, some changing here in the axilla and the groin can occur. Okay, so it is very important to look at the skin. And your colleague, if she is presenting like Adila, she must comment at least by one word. The skin looks normal. I will understand that her software knows what is the neurocutaneous syndromes, okay, and pick it early. Am I clear now how we are dealing with one patient as a treasure for us? It is not only one case. He must open, and then we are going to ask ourselves about the time for this case already ended. We must ask ourselves. Uh, after differential diagnosis and able to diagnose what is the cause of it. But how can I stop it? It is not in your level now to go deep for the how to stop convulsion, but at least you must know the general line that the patient need to put it in a safe position. Okay, don't eat anything in the mouth. And we can use some anticonvulsant which like uh, Bazibam or phenytoin or like that, just general line. And we must know what is the meaning of status ebilepticus. Anyone knows?
a uh, single seizure lasted more than five minutes. Five? No. Who, who agree with him? Uh, seizure lasted more than 30 minutes? Yes. The definition is a prolonged seizure more than 30 minutes or you must go back and and check your pediatric protocol or the patient to go convulsion and he didn't awake between them. I mean, he got convulsion and he is still like in the paralysis or is not conscious until second one and there is 30 minutes in between. I will consider the brain has another convulsion which I cannot see by my eyes. So it is also status epilepticus. And you'll find a very nice definition and a very nice guidance, but the protocol of status epilepticus should be started early if the patient got more than five minutes still convulsing. Okay, I will not say, oh, still, I am going to do any job until he finish his 30 minute convulsion. It is not like that. If he came to me with 30 minutes, so it is already status epilepticus. If he came even after five minutes, I will assume that the patient has can go to status epilepticus, so I will start by the table. Is it clear? Yeah, thank you for this neurofibromatosis. We have, you can see uh, a lot, a lot of, uh, of manifestation in the skin, which will guide us, inshallah. It may be during your, uh, what is this uh, seminar? You can present one seminar, inshallah, under that topic, okay? Neurocutaneous diseases. Okay, am I clear? It is not just a patient is convulsing, but it is a matter how can I think about his age, about his background, what about the causes, what is the top priority for me, what I should exclude, what investigation I'm going to do. All this is uh, a very important. Okay, so I hope uh, is that can update here, uh, Oski. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay. Do you need to ask any questions? Okay, we can go for the second presentation. Okay, so uh, for the second case, uh, for the role play, I will, uh, me, if I then will, uh, act as a doctor and uh, Hidayah uh, will act as a mother of the patient. Okay, so uh, the chief complaint uh, is regarding uh, Anik, uh, one year, two months old uh, Malay boy, Malay boy, referred from general physician to the emergency department HTA with the complaint of fever for six days by to admission and was associated with a uh, skin rash. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Hidayah, are, are you there? Uh, yes. Hi. Yeah, uh, so, <clears throat> Assalamualaikum, uh, Madam. Uh, Madam Hidaya, is it? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, I need to confirm the uh, the by data or the information regarding the the this patient. So, this patient is uh, Anne, one year, two months old. Uh, yeah, and you are the uh, mother of uh, this patient, is it? Uh, yes, I am a mother. Okay, so uh, basically, in order for us to manage and treat 
the illness of uh, your son. Uh, I need to get the more information regarding the presenting illness uh, for the for your son. And for that, I would like to ask uh, more questions and get uh, more uh, points in order for us to manage this patient. So shall we start? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I would like to ask uh, regarding your son. Uh, was uh, he admitted? Uh, he was uh, admitted at uh, for how long? Uh, uh, he has a uh, fever uh, uh, six, for six day and on five day of the illness, uh, he was referred to um hospital uh to help uncle Anderson. Oh, okay, so uh. This is regarding uh, your son uh, that has uh, fever for six days. So uh, I would like to ask, uh, does it uh, happen uh, continuously in nature or does it occur intermittent on and off? Uh, I think uh, on and off because uh, on uh, uh, the, the fever was released on day three, but uh, uh, the fever was uh, we live on day three, but uh, on uh, day five, the fever comes back. Oh, I see. Uh, so do you do anything regarding the the fever of your son? Do you do anything? Uh, uh, first, uh, I give a uh, paracetamol, and the fever uh was relieved uh, temporarily. Oh, I see. Uh, so did you measure the temperature at home or at, at any place? Uh, on day two of uh, in this, uh, I uh, I bring I brought my um son to uh clinic and the fever was documented at uh, thirty eight point nine degrees Celsius. See, so 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 you met uh, uh an, another doctor, is it? Yes. Uh, so, uh, what does the doctor did uh, to your son? Does he uh, prescribe with any medication? Um, uh, the doctor prescribed uh, antibiotic uh, with syrup uh, paracetamol. See. Uh, so, uh, does the fever relief? Uh, yes, uh, the fever was relief uh, on day three of illness. Uh, does it uh, just relieve or it still uh, comes again? I, uh, the fever comes uh, back on day five of illness. Oh, okay. So, uh, so just uh, one day before the admission to this hospital, is it? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, I was told by the, uh, by the, uh, the nurse that uh, your son has a uh, skin rash. Uh, yes, uh, he has skin rash. Uh, can, can you describe the, the nature or the characteristic of the skin rash, like the, the location is it, uh, comes with any lumps and bumps? I noticed uh, the skin rash uh, on his uh, abdomen. Uh, the rash was uh, having caused that, that still like fine sand on spread on, the, uh, on my child's skin. And it was uh, associated with uh, itchiness. Oh, so so the uh, rash starts at the abdomen only. Ah uh, yes. Okay, so uh, is it uh, uh, have any vascular texture, any pattern? Uh, I think uh, it was uh, vascular. I see. So uh. Does your, your son have any contact with any uh, measles or chickenpox patient or any, with any other kid before? Uh, I think uh, no. No. Okay. Uh, is there any... Uh, I would like to ask more getting the other parts of the symptoms. Is there any uh, cough or respiratory problems with your son? Uh, yes, uh, I noticed he has a cough. 
Uh, does it come with sputum or any uh, mucus from the nose? There was no sputum, but uh, but I noticed uh, there was a, a landing nose uh, with clear discharge. Uh, I see. So uh, does your son uh, have any uh, during the regarding the respiratory problem, is it? So does it come with uh, any noisy breathing during uh, inhale or exhale? Uh, it was associated with uh, noisy breathing, uh, open aspiration. Mm. Uh, does it? Does your son have any uh, vomiting? Ah uh, no. Oh, uh, any abdominal pain? Uh, I think there was no abdominal pain. Okay, so uh, so this is the uh, most likely the first time uh, your son has a uh, calf, is it? Uh, uh, yes, but uh, actually, uh, my son has a history of rapid syndrome since birth and has been hospitalized for one week uh, for monitoring, but oh. there was no complication. Let me see, okay. Um, regarding the uh, calf itself, um, did you notice any uh, blood or uh, any blood uh, come up? Uh, no. Uh, did you, your son have any contact with any sick person or TB patient? Uh, there was no contact with uh, TB patient. Okay. Uh, does, uh, in the family have any history of uh, asthma or allergic rhinitis? Uh, no. Uh, so, uh, is there any, uh, regarding your son, uh, is there any shortness of breath or any uh, difficulty in breathing? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, housing area of your of your uh, living home, like that. Uh, is there any uh, recent fogging or dengue case uh, at your housing area? Uh, no, there was no fogging. Okay, no fogging, no dengue. All right. Uh, do you notice any if uh, your son's eyes have any uh, reddish or any uh, discharge or mucus around? I think no. Uh, do, or any, do you notice any lumps and bumps at your uh, child's uh, neck or head? Uh, no. Okay. And did you feel any uh, puffiness or swelling along your son's uh, hands or feet? Uh, there was no uh, selling. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, just now you said that uh, I think your son has a history of caput secundum since birth, and uh, and then uh, that was the first time he was uh, hospitalized. Uh, yes, uh, this is the second time he was okay. uh, hospitalized. Okay, so uh, since then there was no any complication, right? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, any surgical? Uh, did he had any surgical history? Ah uh, no. Okay, so uh, I will move on to the your get your pregnancy for Anik, like right? So uh, during your pregnancy, is there any problem in the, uh, during the pregnancy? Uh, no, there was no uh problem during my pregnancy. Okay. So, uh, you give up the you deliver the uh baby is that through normal or scissor? Uh, he was delivered uh through scissor. Uh, can, can I ask uh why? Mm, because uh, uh, he has a risk of a uh, fetal distress because. Uh, the the birth weight uh is uh three kilogram. Uh, so uh, is it a uh, full term or no? Wait. Uh, he was born at uh thirty eight week of gestation. Oh okay. So uh, after the the birth of Ani, uh, he was, uh, he later on hospitalized for the skin skin problem, right? Right. Ah uh, yes. Okay, so uh, 
did you exclusively uh, breastfeed uh, Anik? Uh, and for how long? Uh, I was uh, exclusively breastfed uh, at the, uh, until the age of six months. Mm, and, and then uh, after that, he started winning, is it? Uh, yes, uh, he started winning and followed with a certain adult food. Uh, uh, can I ask uh, what kind of uh, adult diet that uh, he had at home? Uh, he is currently on adult diet with rice, chicken, vegetable, and fruit. Mm. Uh, he was uh, occasionally doing breast milk also. Oh, uh, he's still on diapers, right? Uh, yes. Uh, did you notice any, uh, if there is any increased frequency or uh, lesser uh, frequency for the annex uh, urination? No, I did not notice any uh, increasing in uh, urination. Okay. Uh, regarding the uh, immunization, right? uh, did he had any, uh, he followed the vaccination uh, program? Uh, yes, uh, he, he has been uh, vaccinated uh, up to his age. Mm. So, uh, for I want to ask you again the developmental uh, of Anik. Uh, uh, so, can uh, can he walk now? Uh, yes, he can walk alone, steadily, and occasionally run. Mm, can, uh, can he... Uh, okay, he can run. Uh. So, uh, did you notice if uh, Anik has, uh, uh, can draw something, can uh, grab uh, the pencil or create any uh, diagram? Uh, he holds a pencil with a cylindrical uh, uh, palmar grabs and scribble uh, spontaneously. Mm, okay. Can he uh, talk uh, to, the, to you or your husband? Uh, he has less than a uh, type of ability and speak one word in a sentence. Mm, okay. uh, we get, uh, did he... Um, <clears throat> can uh, do something on by his own, like uh, playing uh, around on his own, can he uh, drink uh, water without any help? Uh, he can drink uh, from cup without uh, assistance and has a functional play. Mm. So, uh, I want to ask again the, the mystery. Uh, yeah, can I know uh, what is your husband's age? Uh, my husband's age uh, is uh, 26 years old. Uh, and uh, what does he do for a living? Uh, he works as a fast food delivery man in Kuantan. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, what's your uh, age, uh, madam? Uh, I'm uh, 24 years old. Uh, and uh, did you also work? Uh, no, I am currently studying in graphic design in UMP. Mm, okay. So, uh, is there any uh, underlying medical illness that uh, both of you, uh, your, your husband and uh, yourself, uh, had? Uh, there was no underlying disease and we are both uh, well and healthy. Okay. So, uh, where did you uh, live? Uh, we live uh, in uh, in Dramakota with uh, uh, we, my parents and two grown up um, uh, siblings. Oh, I see. Uh, so uh, you live all in one house? Ah, uh, yes. Mm, uh, is there any uh, family members that have the same same illness or symptoms like uh, Hani has right now? Ah uh, no. Okay. So uh when when uh your husband uh is working and currently you are studying, uh does uh you uh take Anik to a nursery? Uh, no, um uh, his uh grandmother will uh take care of him. Mm. 
uh, but uh, with any other children or not? Uh, no, he is alone. Mm, okay. So uh, I want to, uh, the, your housing area, is it uh, seems like a crowded place or otherwise? Uh, no, I think like uh, an overcrowded place. Mm. Uh, I want to ask a quite sensitive question, but it's important so that we can uh, manage uh, the, the whole family and also the child's uh, problem as if uh, there is any risk factor, but I want to ask if your uh, uh, madam or any family members in the house uh, smoke, is smoking? Uh, no, his father also is a non-smoker. Mm, he's not smoker. So that uh, uh, no one uh, nearby is smoking, is it? Uh, yes. I think uh, that's all. So, uh, if do, do you have any question to ask regarding the illness of your child? Uh, no. Okay. So, uh, we will look uh, truly, truly uh, regarding the information that you gave us, and uh, uh, I uh, the time that we have fully investigate uh, and. Uh, create a diagnosis regarding your child's illness, we will contact you so that you can uh, try to explain and also uh, decide uh, for the management. Is, is that okay? Uh, yes. Okay. I think that's all the thing. Lazim, if you have something did you finish? Yes, that. So, can you summarize, please, your uh, findings? Uh, basically, uh, my patient, uh, Anne, uh, one year, two months, year old Malay boy, Malay boy. <laughs> with no known uh, medical illness, uh, currently present uh, with six days of fever uh, prior to admission and was associated with a uh, non productive cough, uh, so throat, and also a uh, sandpaper like uh, uh, the fever was uh, just out the fever was high grade in nature and causing the child to be uh, sympathetic and uh, reduce his. Uh, oral intake. Uh, in addition, uh, the cough was associated with uh, expiratory wheezing with no shortness or difficulty in breathing. Uh, the throat was uh, inflamed, uh, reddish, and uh, like a strawberry tongue uh, appearance. The rash, uh, the same people like uh, rash, was uh, come, uh, starts uh, at the front abdomen and uh, over the shoulder, you know, so it was it's a, the rash also associated with uh, itchiness. And that's all. So, what's your uh, working diagnosis? Uh, my professional diagnosis for, uh, is scarlet fever, uh, secondary to pharyngitis. Based on the secondary, secondary. Two. If you are going to told me scarlet fever, it will be secondary to. Uh, is more proficient. It will be to pharyngitis. Group B uh, straight to cocal oh. pharyngitis. You must tell me the microbe. Mm. Okay. Group B straight to cocal. So. Pharyngitis. So what is uh, your differential diagnosis? Uh, my first uh, professional diagnosis was uh, incomplete Kawasaki disease based on the uh, symptoms is that uh, polar fever, uh, the tongue probably like uh, appearance, uh, sore throat, uh, like uh, the skin rash, you know, so uh, due to the age, because Kawasaki disease really affect uh, children below five years old. Uh, however, uh, there was no uh, conjunctivitis, there was no uh, lymphadenopathy or any extremity changes. 
and that was the, the first uh, artificial diagnosis. The second one uh, would be measles uh, due to the presence of fever, uh, the skin rash, and also a uh, presence of uh, cough and also sore throat. It also comes with uh, runniness. Uh, it also uh, can, can, can be the uh, diagnosis also because this patient does not uh, have the MMR vaccine yet. However, and there was no uh, recent contact with uh, any measles patient and uh, the, the rash will start at uh, the abdominal first. Uh, however, for measles, usually it starts uh, at the head and neck first. And also there was no conjunctivitis. Uh, my, my last provincial diagnosis was dengue fever. Since it also uh, have a high grade fever uh, prolonged. Since uh, prior to admission, this has been uh, six days of fever. And then it also comes with uh, skin rash uh, and itchiness. You know, so it was common in Malaysia. It, uh, it is epidemic. However, there was no uh, any warning signs for dengue fever like uh, vomiting or abdominal pain. And also uh, there was no uh, recent fogging or any prone dengue areas uh, noted. And so there was no, uh, currently there was no uh, signs of dehydration like uh, this. However, there was reduced or intake for this patient. Okay, if we remove the, the issue of uh, strawberry tongue, so can we widen our differential diagnosis? Because fever and rash are very, very big differential diagnosis. You must know about it, okay? So if you find, like you said, if I have strawberry tongue and uh, some rashes and the like that, I should consider scarlet or differential diagnosis Kawasaki, okay? But uh, other other causes of fever and the differential diagnosis, can you tell me some of it? Um, yes, can be caused due to allergy. Okay. Allergy also uh, any uh, toxic shock uh, syndrome. You do streptococcus infection also. You mean streptococcal infection with many types, toxic, toxic fox syndrome. Okay, okay. What else? Um, Other viruses. Viruses. Um. One I don't know. Uh, who knows? Rubella. Okay, so we'll start by. MM, which is measles and uh, MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. So mumps, so measles and the rubella. How is the difference between both of them? Because rubella is is uh, you can consider it is a, a mild measles. Okay. So, is there any thing about the nomenic for the measles? Is it regarding the rash? Yes, of course, rash and the days of fever and like that. Uh, usually, uh, measles, uh, the rash starts from the head and neck and then uh, goes down to the trunk and lower very, extremities. Very, very good. Uh, well, so rubella, funny. rubella, other one. We are, we are said it is like a small curtain. Wow. It will start on the face, neck, and then when it came down, the face will be cleared when you are going down, which are very important. Anything about agnomonic also for missile? Coptic spots. Yes, very important. Who knows, who can demonstrate for me what is this? Can you please open your Google and uh, let us all of us see complex spots, please, because it is very important. Why? Why it is very important complex spots? It will appear before the, the rash. Oh. So the patient will come to you with fever. Okay, and do not yet rash. You may got history of exposure to patient who is missing or usually you will not get it, but you may find the patient uh, one of the family which is known anti-vaccine family. So you will suspect at that point. If you saw it, so you, you need 
to start working diagnosis for that. It is very important and it will give trust with the family for you. You pick it, you said, this one looks like missile. I would like to good precaution because it is notifiable disease and I need to see him tomorrow. Suspected there will be a rash tomorrow. So when the rash appear, everything will be clear. So it is pathognomonic, but it will appear usually before the rash. So take care about that. Uh, of course, complication of pneumonia, of pneumonia and the severity of the case can uh, depend. Anything specific for rubella? Uh, should I ask Nur Hidayah? Nur Hidayah? Uh, yes. Uh, Do you know any, any, any sign is specific for rubella? Uh, 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 I uh, read this of I. Mm, anything specific? We call rubella as a three-day measles, which is a simple measles, okay? But we must take care, we can find some lymph nodes, especially in the scalp, and some sort of reactive arthritis, it will occur with it. So it is very important. So when we are speaking about fever and uh, rash, we must evolving our thinking. Number one, what is the type of the rash? Is it berberic? As we speak before, so it can be severe infection. The day I see, okay, and sometimes accompanied by septicemia due to the the problem with uh, staphylococcal infection or uh, like that okay the second thing uh, good where is the complex spots is it the complex yeah this is the missile rash but i need to see the mouse yes you see it now very clear Hmm? If you saw it, you will not forget it. And this is one of good thing nowadays, which Allah offer it to you in your hand. All of you have this Mr. Google just open and see, but most of us use it for another things, which may only wasting our times or our future, okay? Uh, so I must be able to define is it berberic or non-berberic, even if it is not berberic I'm going to define it. Is it maculobabular? So if maculobabular, I will start by measles, mumps, and then go for other viruses like the fifth disease, the sixth disease, which are causing by many rosella and phantom and like that. So you must be able to, to open this one and see the slab de shake disease, which is a sixth disease, or the fifth disease, the rosella and phantom which is a very known characteristic. So you'll find characteristics. So you must put a landmark for, for everyone. Very, very high fever. Even the child came with febrile convulsion and it dropped abruptly. And once it dropped, the childhood became very red rash, rosella infanta, which is characteristic. Oh, this is a known virus of Rosella and phantom. So it is very important to try to put this. But if I found this rash is not maculopapular, I found it vesicular. So who can tell me if it is vesicular? What is my differential diagnosis now? If I was. No, dengue is not, dengue is maculopapular. Vesicular, if you hear about vesicular rash, what is the most popular disease which we know? Chikungunya. 
chicken pox. My chicken pox. Yes, this is, this is very, very important, okay? Chicken pox in infants or children, sometimes the shingle, but it is not so common in, uh, in children, but you must suspect. What else? Very good that we remember chicken pox. Remember that uh, chicken pox has vaccination now, which is available and given at the age of one year, and it give looks like uh, world, uh, uh, what is this uh, whole life protection against shingle and uh, chicken pox. Uh, it is very, very important, okay, and available now which prevent a lot of complication. But other, other vesicular skin rash. Hand, foot, mouth disease. Yes, can be hand, foot, mouth disease, okay. What else? Shingles. Shingles, yes, it is the same disease of a varicella, which is a chicken box, but it came with limited infection to a nerve. And remember this are very important. It will come affecting the nerve root. So usually if it came to the chest, it looks like the patient has severe pain, especially if he's uh, old age like me like that, he will go and think, is it a cardiac attack because the severity of the pain and after some time, when the rush will appear, <laughs> all are changing their mind. So it is very important. But I am speaking about herpes simplex. Yes, you see these shingles. If came to the chest, they may think about MI. If came to the abdomen, they are thinking about acute abdomen. Because before the rush appear, the pain are very, very, very agonizing. Do you know? It, they call this shingle as fire shot. By Arabic, they said al ayar al nari As if someone shoot you by a fire. It is very painful. Uh, that's why the most important one, which I need you not to forget, is the herpes simplex, which is vesicular rash herpes simplex and it is very dangerous to miss it okay especially in small babies in neonates do you know that if the mother you are working now with us in pediatrics if the mother has herpes simplex in the external genitalia it is one of the indication to do cesarean why because the rate of infectivity are very high and the rate of transmission of the virus to the brain and causing encephalitis are very high also. That's why we must be very cautious about the characteristics, about the characteristic of rash. It is very important to us to know, is it maculopapular? Is it vesicular? And another important point, you must comment about that. Is this rash only to the skin or skin and the mucous membrane? So I ask it now, if this rash are connected also to the mucous membrane, so I must ask Rauda. Do you know some diseases which can affect both the skin and the mucous membrane? And they can threaten the life? Sorry? Uh, can you repeat the question? Again, can you raise your voice? Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes, the question now, if you have a rash which affect the skin and the mucous membrane. Um, okay, let I us know. start. Let us start by uh, erythema multiformis. 
Steven Johnson syndrome, which is erythema multiforme major. If you find in this Steven Johnson syndrome, the patient has the skin rash, whatever, and start to affect the mucous membrane. I mean by the mucous membrane in the mouth, in the eyes, in the external genitalia, okay, the anus. It is very important because sometimes it is so severe that it can threaten the life. And you must know about this, Stephen Johnson. And uh, if you can open one photo for it, please, to us, Stephen Johnson syndrome. Thank you for doing a good job. Just to let your colleague see. This is Herbis uh, simplex, and it is very clear. And remember that in pediatric, it can affect the brain and causing encephalitis. You see now, Stephen Johnson syndrome. If you write pediatrics, it will be more clear to us, but you can see what is going for the mucous membrane of the mouth, of the eyes, of the external genitalia, of the other area of the skin, which are very, very dangerous. And this one considered as a medical emergency. Are knowing to upgrade antibiotic or need to start steroid like that. So it is very important. That's why also a case of skin, it is another treasure. It will guide you how to collect the knowledge about the skin, the skin lesion, its type, is it macule, maculopapular. Is it a pustule? And the most important, how is the distribution? Another point, is there any, is there any affection of the mucous membrane or not? Okay. And the other structure also we must take care about. I mean the skin appendages, if there anything in the eyelash in the nails, in the hair, all these are known as skin appendages, which can be a part of the problem. Uh, am I clear how we are now not just to diagnose a case of a scarlet or a case of dengue or a case of Kawasaki? Now we have a lot of differential diagnosis in our background. Can you please uh, start to present your slides? Okay. Continue for your OSCE and the differential diagnosis, please. Okay, so uh, I think the differential diagnosis, the, the, the professional diagnosis was a uh, scarlet fever, secondary to base streptococcus uh, pharyngitis. And uh, the points for will be the throat, throat, the fever, the centipede rash, and also uh, <clears throat> and many more. You can do the strawberry uh, like appearance of the tongue, and, and there was also non productive cough, which uh, signs of the pharyngitis also can be, uh, and also there was injected throat and also respiratory breathing. However, um, there was no risk factor to uh, which with regarding the transmission of the infection itself, since there is no sick contact and also there was no signs of overcrowded or uh, interactive, uh, many interactive uh, with uh, other kids. Okay, the second one will be the okay. Kawasaki disease. Okay, but, uh, all, of you, uh, all of you must be able to know how is the mechanism of scarlet fever. Is it the toxin and the way it is working, please, okay? Okay, go for Kawasaki. Oh, 
was a key disease. Uh, there was several uh, symptoms that uh, would uh, suggest uh, cause key disease, which is the prolonged fever and the strawberry like appearance, the injected throat and red, or red lips. There was also a skin rash, and also is uh, also a risk factor as it uh, usually affect uh, children, which is. Uh, which is uh, below five uh, years old. And uh, for Kawasaki disease, there was a uh, diagnostic criteria, obviously six parameters. The first one is uh, it must be uh, with fever uh, at least for five days. You know, so it must be uh, comes with four, uh, at least four over five of these symptoms, like uh, the first one, conjunctivitis. The second one, uh, mucosal changes, which is the strawberry uh, appearance of the tongue. Also, it comes with lymphadenopathy. However, in this patient, there was no conjunctivitis, and also there was no lymphadenopathy. And also, it comes with uh, polymorphous rashes like uh, maculopapular rash, erythematous skin rash, discommission. And also, the last one would be the extremity uh, changes, which is uh, the if there is any erythematous or edema swelling of the uh, hands and foot of the patient, however, now is uh, since it was not uh, fulfilled the criteria, uh, the, it would be the incomplete cause of disease. Also, uh, there was no uh, much more points against uh, based on this. So, it, so yeah, cause of disease. Then the next one would be the measles. If there was a uh, fever, uh, there was a uh, rash, presence of cough, sore throat, and you know, so since the patient was not uh, having the MMR uh, vaccine yet, it's also one of the risk factors for this patient for any, to have uh, measles. And uh, however, the points again, the, the rash uh, start at the abdomen, meanwhile for measles, it starts at the head and neck first. And there was no uh, recent contact with measles. There was no conjunctivitis. And the last one would be the dengue fever, right? uh, based on uh, skin rash, presence of skin rash, fever, uh, itchiness. Also, it was epidemic in Asia, so it's a risk factor. However, there was no uh, much more symptoms that uh, suggest is not the dengue fever, such as the uh, the this patient, uh, this family. Is not uh, living in a dengue prone area. There was no recent fogging. Uh, and regarding the symptoms, there was no other signs of dengue fever like uh, vomiting, uh, abdominal pain. Uh, and there was no uh, signs of dehydration like uh, thirsty. Uh, however, there was a uh, reduced orientation. And I think that's all regarding the differential diagnosis. You need Thank just you. to. To make amendment as we spoke together about every differential diagnosis, even after uh, measles and rubella, do not go for rosella and phantom and infectious uh, infectiousism. Okay, it is very important to add it to your uh, differential diagnosis. Of course, you must put also a slide about the vesicular skin rash differential diagnosis. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, we can go for OSCE now. Yes. Okay, uh, can you all hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, so for the last part of our presentation, I'll be presenting about the OSCE and there are a few questions. So for the first question, uh, a nine-year-old girl is brought to the clinic because she is suffering from a headache, fever, mm -hmm. chills, and a rash. Um, the rash covers her neck, chest, and under her armpits. The parent explained that the rash appeared today and that for the past two days, the patient had been complaining of a sore throat. And the child has no allergies, her immunizations are all up to date, and she has no other past medical history. The blood pressure is 115 over 70 millimeter mercury and her pulse is 110 per minute. Respirations are 22 per minute and her temperature is 38.4 Celsius. A physical examination reveals, reveals a generalized erythematous rash that has a sandpaper-like texture. 
and it will also bench when pressure is applied. The patient also has a submandibular lymphadenopathy and throat is covered in grey white exudates. So for the questions, I'll be mentioning your name and you need to answer the question. So for the first question, what is the like the, the what is likely the diagnosis? Uh Ida. Uh, the like the like the diagnosis is scarlet fever. Should I give the reason? Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, because uh the patient comes with uh a headache uh, uh of the prodromus abs viral uh, problem syndrome then the rashes cover her neck and then to the chest and also under her armpits and we can also uh, at the the rash also plays like sense like sense paper like stitch mm, that's too and there is gray white as you did in her in her throat mm. i think that's all Okay, thank you. Uh, for the next question, what is the causative organism? Uh, for us? Uh, the causative organism for scarlet fever will be group A streptococcus. Group? Group A streptococcus. Okay, correct. And the next person is uh, Hidayah. What are the investigations that you would like to do? Take care, to the, take care the, the full name is Group A, beta hemolytic streptococci. Ah. Group A, beta hemolytic streptococci. Okay. Uh, so for uh, question number three, uh, the answer is a uh, rapid, uh, rapid streptococcus test throat uh, and throat uh, swap. Ah, okay. So we another, will be another important test which is available now is the ANA for for the group B streptococci, which also are more sensitive and can diagnose many of the cases. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll be moving on to the second question. Uh, next. Okay, a five-year-old patient enters the emergency room with chest pain and an irregular heartbeat. He previously had the scarlet fever secondary to the pharyngitis, and when he had the scarlet fever, he did not finish his course of antibiotics, and then he got sick again and did not get the treatment. So, uh, for the first question, what is the complication that this patient most likely experiencing? Uh, Akila. Um. This patient is most likely uh, be complicated by rheumatic fever because um, the patient presented with the signs and symptoms of like um, carditis, mm. such as chest pain and irregular heartbeat. And uh, he previously had scarlet fever, and scarlet fever um, can progress into rheumatic fever. Yeah. And um, there is evidence of um, non compliance with treatment. So it's possible that this patient can be complicated uh, into rheumatic fever. Okay, thank you. So uh, for the second question, what is the reason for the diagnosis in A to develop in this patient? Uh, Rauda? Um, C, right? Uh, question C, right? Question B, what is okay. the reason uh, of the... Scarlet fever wasn't properly treated due to patients non-compliance towards antibiotics. Uh, okay. And the last question, uh, state the other complications of scarlet fever. Uh, Izati? Uh, other complications of uh, scarlet fever are uh, pneumonia. Uh, otitis media and also acute glomerulonephritis. Hmm. Okay. So that's all for the OSCE session. So uh, extra questions which are very important. 
for scarlet fever what is the description of the rash Thank you. Hmm? Scarlet fever, is it? Yes. Uh, sandpaper like rash? Yes, what is sandpaper? Um, like rough uh, paper? Yeah, it is, it is better felt than seen. So you need to touch the patient at, at this rash. You will feel it is like a sand. Sometimes it is not so clear by vision, but if you touch it, you, you will not see it. Another, there is some signs you can see in the anticubital fossa, which are very important also, which can guide you for the diagnosis. Is it pitiki? No, 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 not pitiki. It is not oh. a case of dengue now. Uh, where is your colleague who is opening uh, his job today is, uh, is Mr. Gogil. Can you write Bastia sign, Bastia signs or skin manifestation of scarlet fever? It is very important because uh, as I told you, if you see the complex spots, you are able to diagnose. If you feel that the sand uh, paper, you will not forget mm -hmm. at all. If you look at the, at the anticubital fossa and find some important clue for the diagnosis, it will not be missed. Uh, until uh, your colleague can open the, the another photos. Uh, the most important, uh, all of you must know what is John's criteria for rheumatic fever, okay? And what is uh, also criteria for subacute bacterial endocarditis? It must be very clear with you from the start, okay? You need to revise and uh, Tell me that you already got it or send it to me, okay? Scoring for bacterial endocarditis and for uh, rheumatic fever, okay? The other thing, remember that uh, streptococcal in the skin, okay? Like a case of MTIGO, usually it will affect the kidney and it can cause both streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Okay. But from the throat, usually it will cause rheumatic fever, but the reverse can occur sometimes. They said it, it is related to the strain of the streptococcal, of the group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Is it clear? Hello? Okay. So anyone open the Google to see the, the scale rash of scarlet fever? I'm sorry, Doctor. I think my internet is not that strong. Uh, can anyone open it? Yes, you can see now the rashes. Where is the pastia sign? Yeah, in the anticubital fossa. Oh, yeah, this one is the typical rash. Okay. Yeah, you can see this one with the R. 
arms and leg also. I cannot see it is very small for my mobile. What is the name? Past your sign and Is it Bastia Lines and Flat of Mask? Yes. It is very important if you found it, it, it will guide you. Okay, so all of you need to revise, please, all the photos related to the scarlet fever, okay, as if you see the patient himself. And even these photos will give you a broader spectrum about suspicious. Yes, you can see this, yeah, the anticubital fossa now, if you make it slightly larger and the description of it. Okay. Yes, this line are very clear. Yes, of course, you must know some details about the general line of management of this scarlet fever and how we are able to eradicate the group A streptococci. Group A beta hemolytic streptococci are very important. Okay, uh, that's good. Do you have uh, any question before we close our session? Yeah, Bastia signs that persistent after the rash has faded. Yeah, this is very nice one which will guide you. Bastia sign, okay. Any questions? No, not then. Okay, see you inshallah soon in the hospital and be prepared. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Rate.